Wednesday morning. I'm Kevin Walsh, joined by Donnie, right side, DRS. How we feel here on a Wednesday? Yeah, it's hump day. I mean, we're ready to get after it. A lot of good stuff going on. Got a nice tight fade ready to go for the show today. I'm in here early today and ready. I'm ready. Now, you bring up a good point. I mean, Donnie gets a yeah. fresh cut. I mean, where, where did that land huh? inside the top seven? Is that a bad job out of me? Not giving the people the right lead story? That should have came right into it, man. I mean, we should have actually had a camera around the following him around on my day to day here, getting the fresh cut, getting ready. Because I got to look good for the people out here, Kevin. And yeah. I think we both look good for the people. Oh, wow. I didn't expect a, a compliment to be thrown my way. You must see be that in a good mood. I mean, you must man. be, I am you must be in, in a tremendous. I might pay for your haircuts moving forward if that's how <laughs> things go, are going to play man. out moving yeah. here on the early line, man. Uh, but you want to talk about things playing out. Man, the I told you so meters running up these days. The Utah Jazz listening on Donovan Mitchell offers, a.k.a. Donovan Mitchell is going to be traded out of Utah sooner than later. Who knows? Maybe, Donovan, this will be resolved before KD's even moved. You know, you're driving around maybe for a good bagel in the morning or a breakfast sandwich, and you drive mm -hmm. by your favorite shop, and it says we're closed right now. So you drive back again, still says closed. You do a third drive-by, and you see the person flip that sign to open. That's exactly mm -hmm. what the Utah Jazz are doing. Like, come on, offers. Come one, come all. We got a sale going on. Look, Donovan Mitchell, a young all-star caliber player, it's very, very interesting to see what the Jazz can bring back because of obviously the Rudy Gobert deal. Early teams we know to watch out for, the New York Knicks and the Miami Heat. We'll discuss both of those. A pair of updates around the Nets stars, both quite interesting. The first report came earlier in the day and that the Warriors are hesitant to deal out their young core. Kaminga, Poole, Moody, and Wiseman for the chance to bring back Kevin Durant to the Bay. Yeah, let's get a little bit nervous here for the Golden State Warriors because if they make that move to get Kevin Durant, it renders the you know, 2022-2023 obsolete at this point because they'll be far and away the best overall team in the NBA. But I do like the fact where, you know, the Golden State Warriors are saying, like, yeah, we don't know if we want to give up some bench guys in order to get KD back. Maybe just a little jab at KD. Like, yeah, we actually don't need you, but we could use you. It's a... It's an odd spot for the Warriors to be in. Yeah. I think, to your point, if they brought Kevin Durant in for that young core, they're currently 7-1 to one to win the title. They'd be no bigger than 2-1, to one, probably, to win the championship yeah. if they did execute a deal. Is it worth it? We'll talk about that a little bit. We'll also talk about the latest Kyrie Irving that dropped late night, a report from more the local side there, not a Woj Shams or Chris Haynes, but this came from, I believe it was the New York Post, that... Kyrie Irving is going to stay or will stay if, if he has his choice in Brooklyn, regardless of whether Kevin Durant is there or not. This is one of those to me, Donnie, you got to click through, really decipher the headlines. I do not think Kyrie's ideal scenario is staying in Brooklyn without KD, regardless of what the headline reads. Yeah, and this is one of those where if you're the front office for the Brooklyn Nets, you're probably sitting back on, oh, did you hear that report last night that he actually wants to stay in Brooklyn with us here? This is a fracture of two sides, whether it's Kyrie's people or it's the Nets people in this end. They're probably not even talking yeah. to each other. Just, oh, did you hear the report? Oh. Yeah, it looks like Kyrie wants to stay. I, the radio audience is here with us on a Wednesday morning. Kevin Walsh, Donnie, right side of the early line, Sirius XM, Channel 159. Like, no one talks to KD. No one talks to Kyrie. Is that, does Steve Nash talk to anybody? Like, do you think he's like, no. listen, as long as they just forget I'm here, no one's going to fire me. Neither side It'll talks be just to fine. It'll, yeah, everybody's tired of Steve <laughs> yeah. Nash. He's out there yeah. doing TikTok with uh -huh. the misses. Good yep. for him. How about some Major League Baseball headlines? The Baltimore Orioles do it once again. Ninth consecutive win for the O's. They trailed in this one early, pulled it back late, and again find themselves in the win column. Yeah, how about this? A comeback win, too. I thought the Chicago Cubs would handle it. I was looking pretty smart up two to nothing, but here come the O's trying to make the playoffs here. Buyers at the deadline. Let's see it, Baltimore. Yeah, good for uh man, good for them. Tenth win in a row, potentially coming Crazy. up tonight. How about this one? A little bit surprising. I initially had typed in Garrett Cole K's 11 Reds, bounce back performance. All of that's still true. It's just that 
Clay Holmes, who would have been probably baseball's best reliever, not that that maybe isn't still the case, could not get a Cincinnati red out, and it was a nightmare scenario. Yanks blow a 3-0 lead in the top of the ninth inning and drop now their third consecutive game here. Yeah, one of those days in the Bronx where it was, you know, 88 degrees, wind blowing out. You would thought the Yankees' bats would carry the day, but it looked like they only needed three runs, only for the Cincinnati Reds to come back and shock them. Eh, they'll get it back together, but that's a bad loss for the Yanks. That should be a win. That should be one of the win column. I think the real tough loss is those who had the over. You see Cincinnati go 3-3. Three, three. Mm. You say, stop the bleeding. Yeah. Let's get ourselves to extra yeah. innings and navigate it from there. And that was not able to come in. We're hearing a couple of quotes out there from a couple of all-time greats. Gronk says that he is retired and nothing will change that. We'll get into whether we believe that or not. I don't want to blow through because I want to make sure I bring up this next one here. Donnie Tiger, furious. Mm-hmm with the live golfers saying they turned their back on the PGA, which gave these guys the opportunity to thrive. Hey, yeah, quickly on both. Gronk's going to play football again, and Tiger will play an LIV golf event. So there you go. Uh, that settles it. Oh, man, a double hot take, which means you have to stay right here on the early line. It's yeah. a quick break. Yep. We'll right back at it. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. And then Garrett Cole will be the payup price here at $10,500. Uh, Washington in particular, David, 1-9 and nine in their last 10. Worst team in baseball by far. Uh, but pretty decent matchup tonight at home. Yeah, they stink. But Josiah Gray does not stink. Now, uh, he has definitely had some troubles with run prevention this season. He's given up, you know, six earned runs a couple times, seven earned runs a couple times. But even... The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. So, Connor, you see the odds. How do you blend the future and all the changes we will see in the coming years with what is actually going to happen in the present? I don't think it makes any difference. I think this; those are two totally separate deals. I, I don't think USC's 2022 outlook is dependent on what happens, you know, with their future move to the Big Ten. I think it's dependent on whether or not Caleb Williams is actually going to be good against a defense who can actually who can actually play football. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. Close, you can get some California programming. Get ready for one of the most expensive campaign races we've ever seen on your TV sets. Have you watched a Giants or yes. a Padres game? Yes, and the ads are absolutely insufferable. Vicious, I would say. Just- I mean, the- they're going at jugulars. Like, they're doing some real nasty, nasty <laughs> stuff to each other. The Bostonian versus the book. Pharrell, coast to coast. To roll with a guy like Xander Shabby that's as hot as he is. I think that you have to have a small piece of him in some aspect because history says at this tournament that guys that come in playing very well, whether it's a win in in the five or six weeks coming in or a bunch of top tens in the five or six weeks coming in, they usually perform very well. Uh, I think that you have to have a small piece. The Sports Grid Network. Donovan Mitch 
show trades, trades, trades. Right now is where the attention lies within the NBA because we know that the Kevin Durant stuff looms large over the league, but he is now not really the only superstar or at least star that's on the table for potential trades. The second that Rudy Gobert was moved out of Utah, you knew the clock was ticking, was ticking on Donovan Mitchell. And the Jazz basically to leverage up their position, ah, we're not moving Donovan, we're good here. And Donovan helped them out, to be fair, by saying, I'm not requesting a trade, I'm, I'm good. I am sure, though, that Donovan Mitchell is very happy to be moving, considering we knew Donovan was annoyed the second Quinn Snyder left a couple of months back. So this, to me, when we hear the report, the Woj tweet basically saying that after previously shutting down inquiries on Donovan Mitchell, rival teams say the Jazz are showing a willingness to listen on possible trade scenarios. This, it does not surprise me. This is the right move for the Utah Jazz. I've said throughout the buildup to the offseason, the double tear down. Moving on from both Gobert and Donovan Mitchell is the way to play it out. And it seems like that's exactly what the Jazz are going to do. Yes, and also let's equate this to the Brooklyn Nets scenario as well, where you have a superstar caliber player that a lot of franchises certainly would like. But when you hear the reports where KD says in Brooklyn, I want out, when you see Rudy Gobert out in Utah, when you see the coach out in Utah, that sends a signal around the league like this is, as what you said, a teardown. Let's go get him cheap, Kevin. How about two first rounders, maybe a pick swap and a starter here? That should be good enough. They go, hold on now. We still have a superstar player. We're not just giving him away. So then you see that market cool down, and then you see the rest of the teams start to call with real packages. So that's why you get a Utah Jazz going, we're not willing to really listen on offers for Donovan Mitchell. Then all of a sudden, these offers get serious, and all of a sudden, Kevin, we are open for business now. And that's what a good GM does, because even if you have the best player in the league, like a Giannis Antetokounmpo, if the offer is right, you're going to listen here. If the offer is so ridiculous where it puts yourself in even more of a power position, you will listen. You're going to pick up every single phone call, and it looks like now Utah, Kevin, is getting intrigued with some of the packages that could be coming back for Donovan Mitchell if they decide to move on. And the Jazz, I'm I'm wondering, look, it was kind of time on Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert as is. I wonder if any of this is spurred on by the Victor Webinyama draft that's coming up. I don't know how many folks out there watching and listening are familiar with Victor Webinyama, but I would say for an overseas prospect a year out from next year's draft, probably more familiar than you typically would be. Like, there's part of the reason I don't think you've got 2023 NBA draft odds is it's hard to post a guy at minus 1,000 a year out to go first, but that's essentially where Vic would be. So maybe that's part of the reason you're seeing this jazz teardown. But I think there's also going to be some very legitimate suitors out there for Donovan Mitchell. Compiled a list of five teams that I think you could see enter the conversation. The first two on this list, Donnie, though, we know have already made phone calls. And that's the Miami Heat and the New York Knicks. We've heard a little bit more even about the Knicks yesterday and that this team has probably eight draft picks between four of their own and four belonging to other teams that they could potentially use. And maybe even R.J. Barrett enters the conversation here. You and I were not huge fans of the Jalen Brunson move. Thoughts on the Knicks making the position or the, the angle towards a Donovan Mitchell acquisition? I think that would fire up the Knicks fan base, right? You get a Donovan Mitchell headed to the guard, and that's excitement here. Does it put you over the top in the Eastern Conference? No, it doesn't. But you have to start somewhere, right? You can't just say, hey, Knicks, overnight we're going to rebuild this team with KD, Steph Curry, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. You can't do that. You have to start in incremental steps here where you say, okay, we have the foundation of our team. Let's get another young, good player in his prime and see if we can build off that over the years. I think it does make a lot of sense for the New York Knicks to go after him because you still need box office. It's still Madison Square Garden. It's still the top market in the country, and the NBA itself, Adam Silver included, would love to see superstars go to New York as that draw because we haven't had that in the past, what, 10, 15, 20 years where all these openings come up where you have salary cap relief here for the Knicks, but they can't seem mm -hmm. to land that young superstar. I think Donovan Mitchell would fit in perfectly with the New York Knicks in that environment as well. So I think Donovan Mitchell checks every box as far as being a star here wants to be here. He'll show up to all the Mets games in the world. He'll embrace the city. I think he'll own the garden quite nicely. I really do. I don't love the 
the state, though, of the roster of the Jalen Brunson, Donovan Mitchell, R.J. Barrett front three. Three guys that are score first, it would feel like. Maybe someone would argue on Brunson. I'm not sure, though, I would listen to it. And probably, what, negative defenders, the three of them as well. Certainly Donovan and R.J. Barrett would fit that description. So the roster fit now comes off just a little bit clunky to me when you look at the state of things, which is, again, why that Jalen Brunson move was really far from my favorite. What I'm fascinated in, Donnie, is how much the Jazz potentially value R.J. Barrett. If they really covet R.J., right? We talk about all these different traits. Hey, what do teams think of Scotty Barnes? What do teams think of Brandon Ingram? What do teams think of Tyler Hero? What do they think of R.J. Barrett? Because, look, if this tra- if it's five first-round picks on R.J. Barrett, I think I'd tell the Jazz to beat <laughs> it as is. This isn't going to move the needle for me. But if it's R.J. Barrett and two picks... I start to be a little more interested. I think you can kind of fill out your roster a little bit better. Now, I think Knicks fans will be disappointed to see RJ go, but the fit might make a little bit more sense if RJ's actually being moved to Utah in the deal. We know the Miami Heat are going to be calling. We know that Danny Ainge was in on Tyler Hero coming out of Kentucky. And I think at this point, if you're the Miami Heat, pivot off of Kevin Durant. Off of Kevin Durant. I know that might sound crazy, DRS, but I just don't see a pathway for a KD deal happening at this point for Miami. Maybe Utah values Tyler Hero a little bit more. Maybe Utah values your draft picks a little bit more. If I'm Miami, I'm making the pivot point. See if I can keep Bam Adebayo in a deal, and I'm seeing if I can bring Donovan Mitchell in to pair with Jimmy Butler and Bam. Yes, and take a look at the two sports leagues here, Kevin, the NFL and the NBA and how they operate, right? When you take a look at a Devontae Adams from the Green Bay Packers going to the Las Vegas Raiders, you give up a first-round draft pick. Look at the end, and you're talking about a top three, top two, maybe the best (laughs) overall wide receiver in football. And if you want to make a move for Donovan Mitchell, who's a very good basketball player, you're giving up one of your pillar pieces. Let's just keep it with the Knicks again, right? R.J. Barrett moves on. But it's not a one-for-one deal. You're giving up three or four more first-round picks on top of that. So it's hard to equate those two sports leagues when you say, well, how can superstars move so freely in the NFL? But in the NBA, like, if you want to get something, you really have to give something to get it. But it just feels like the Miami Heat have always been that perfect fit here for Donovan Mitchell. And it just seems like that's what the organization does. Oh, we don't think we can fit him in the salary cap or move pieces around. Doesn't it feel like Pat Riley and that team always makes it fit? If they want to go out and get a superstar, they can do it. Whether it's, you know, putting LeBron James... Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh together and then retooling a few years later, they always seem to have something up their sleeve. So if we put like an odds, my odds board together and say, where is Donovan Mitchell going to land? It's probably the Miami Heat way up there at this point because you're right. KD moving on, because if we're talking about Mm -hmm. trade packages for Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell, what is the actual true market value here of Kevin Durant? And as we said, you're not going to be the Miami Heat and say, okay, Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, and three first-round picks for Kevin Durant. But the point of it is you get Kevin Durant to win a championship, not get Kevin Durant to restart your franchise. Uh, Certainly not. And the thing, Kevin Durant's value versus Donovan Mitchell's is a very interesting conversation. Kevin Durant is a full tier, if not multiple tiers, better than Donovan Mitchell. One of them is 33. One of them is 25. That matters. If you're sending out a lot of draft capital, right, it might be a little more beneficial to have the 25-year-old around who's got a cleaner bill of health at this point, like Donovan Mitchell potentially does. I'll add this. The Miami Heat, 5-1 to to win the Eastern Conference right now, plus 220 Boston, plus 250 Milwaukee. Bringing in Donovan, assuming you keep Bam and Jimmy, I'm not saying it jumps either of those two, but I think it creates a clear big three in the East. There were three other teams on that list. We'll hit those quickly and then present you some Major League Baseball headlines, including the Orioles' win streak, which is still going on. All next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. 
play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. So we take a look at Heinz Field changing its name over to Akrasure Stadium. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? You have to understand, it's about making money. Here, get ready. Are we not too far off of Lambeau Field being Toyota Stadium, Yankee Stadium being Ford Stadium, and Fenway Park being sponsored by Snickers? I don't know, but this environment is coming. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Was last year Pete Gibson? Like, is that is this basically going to be who he is? Or do you think that there's another gear? Well, I mean, I actually think this rookie season was much more Pete Gibson because they were using him as a pass catcher that season. Uh, he had 44 targets in 10 games as a rookie, had 52 targets in 16 games last year, did miss the one game with injury. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Harrell inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports. St. Andrews, the press center at the university just next to the old course, 150th British Open. Everybody excited about all here. How about the university itself, a leader in tech, esports, and other events? In fact, in the United States, esports engagement doubled from 20 to 21 and expect a 61% additional increase. 2022. That's $610 million and more to come. This is all phases of eSport. We're thinking about an Olympic acceptance of the event. We're thinking about more and more colleges and universities framing their programs around eSports. We're talking about how it's accepted as a sport for people that'll help work on countries' national security and design recognition, a whole host of things over time. Closing out this Don and Mitchell conversation, I put together a list of, I thought, five reasonable potential landing spots for Donovan. There's two very clear in the Miami Heat and the New York Knicks. And I, Knicks, and I mentioned three others. The Brooklyn Nets, the Memphis Grizzlies, and the Toronto Raptors. I'll expand maybe on what doesn't catch your attention. But tell me, you see those bottom three teams after the two clear teams that we know are on the list of potential suitors. Who catches your attention for a potential Donovan Mitchell landing spot? I'm, I'm going to say, like, the I don't know about the Grizzlies itself because what are you doing? Hey, we want John Moran back in the deal, right? It doesn't make too much sense here. But I always say the Raptors seem to keep coming up because it seems like, Kevin, they have those pieces that other teams would want. It doesn't seem so outlandish to give up one or two of those pieces to get back a superstar. And quite frankly, they've done it in the past, right? Hey, we've made that seamless transition of getting a superstar to our team in Kawhi Leonard and winning an NBA championship. Not to say if Donovan Mitchell goes to Toronto, they're going to be the forefront of the NBA. NBA, but it just seems like that type of franchise, along with the Miami Heat, just seems like they have enough pieces to the puzzle to make it fit where if you give up a few pieces, you still have some talent left behind where Donovan Mitchell can work it. I would go with the Raptors in this spot. Yeah, I, I think the Raptors, again, if they don't think they have enough to get a KD deal done, can make this move. And also, if they want to stay younger in the return, maybe Donovan Mitchell fits their position a little bit better. I think the Memphis Grizzlies need to make a phone call here. Hey, look, the, the Western Conference is looking to get better. You never know. Kevin Durant could join your league. The Lakers look like they're retooling. Clippers expected to be healthy. If you're Memphis, you need to pair, ideally, another legitimate all-star next to John Morant. I know people will say Jaron Jackson Jr. 
dealing with surgery. He's already going to miss a little bit of time. And Jaron isn't a star in the same way that a Donovan Mitchell is a star. Maybe he makes some sense there with a lot of good players in that organization and potential draft picks. Lastly, the Nets. That might surprise people, but do not forget, Brooklyn is trying to stay competitive, KD or not, because they don't own their own draft picks. If a Kevin Durant deal is executed, they might be interested in repackaging some of those assets, sending them to Utah, and bringing Donovan in to their own organization and trying to win from there. Of course, the caveat is Donovan and Ben Simmons cannot be on the same team, so it would also require a Ben Simmons trade. But maybe Utah would be interested in potentially bringing Ben Simmons in all really interesting spots. We'll talk more about the Brooklyn Nets when we make the trip over to our number two. But in terms of Major League Baseball last night, there was a lot of good stuff, but I have to bring this up right off the uh, right off of the bat here. Baltimore, ninth in a row. I have to imagine that this will be the most surprising win streak we see all season long. Maybe it will continue today. I don't tr- truthfully care about level of competition. I know they're not playing the, re- the rest of the AL East throughout this run. It doesn't matter. This was a team, Donna, that we were like, do you think they'll be dogs in all 162? Somewhat tongue-in-cheek, somewhat serious. Nine in a row for Baltimore. They're 588 games into the season. It's incredible. Let's just say and look at the AL East overall. What's more surprising to us here? The Yankees with 61 wins or the Baltimore Orioles after 88 games being 44 and 44? It's by far the Baltimore Orioles. I thought this was yet another league or excuse me, another season in the American League where they were just going to be a punching bag here. We also laughed at, look at that stupid move to change and ruin your stadium. Maybe that was the catalyst to give this team confidence where, hey, we can actually pitch in Major League Baseball if we're not just giving up missiles in to the left field seats. It's amazing to see what they're doing. A nine-game win streak, and it's also coming up upon the All-Star break. Let's just say they run this up to 10 games, 11, 12, or 13 games. This is one of those teams like, no, no All-Star break. Let's play right through this thing. We're a young baseball team finally starting to win. And the jokes start to come out where it's like, yes, are they going to be buyers at the deadline? Well, I mean, if you're in a wild card hunt here, you can't just leave the team on edge. Who would have thought, like, the Baltimore Orioles are one of those teams where you would be selling pieces off, like, ah, Cedric Mullins, who'll be good for somebody else, or, you know, Trey Mancini. He'd be a nice piece for a team that's looking to contend. Maybe you're going to look to contend a lot sooner than later in Baltimore. And at the minimum, the difference between not maybe going from, from seller to buyer, but seller to not seller changes the landscape in baseball. There's a lot of people who felt that Trey Mancini might be the most coveted bat on the market. Yeah. And maybe that speaks to the market a little bit. But if that's all of a sudden off the table, that matters. And I do not think Baltimore, in the face of all, of all the different things that they're putting forward right now, can send out Mancini and Jorge Lopez and Cedric Mullins and just let it go. That, I, that, that would be such a slap in the face of the organization, these players, and these fans. And I hope that that isn't the end result. You look at the rest of this slate. I have to bring this up. Now, it doesn't jump off the page at some of the other headlines, but in the same way that when Spencer Howard takes the mound, I can't wait to see how it plays out. Dallas Keuchel fits the same description for you. Decent in his last outing. Yeah, he corrected course almost immediately. Goes out there, two and a third inning, eight hits, eight runs, seven earned. Horrendous from Dallas Keuchel. Typically, though, what you expect. Yeah, it is what you expect here. And also, you're talking about conditions where we brought this game up yesterday. said, man, sometimes you just got to fade Keuchel because we don't really know why he's in Major League Baseball at this point. And the joke was, if you're a left-handed young kid here, look at Dallas Keuchel. You can make it to the majors and get nobody out and still certainly have a spot in a rotation on a lower-level ball club here. 13 to nothing final for the Giants, and it was over quickly. I even made a joke yesterday. I took the team total over for the Giants. Like, man, wouldn't it be nice to get this by, like, the fourth inning? Didn't even need the fourth inning here. But that's what Dallas Keuchel provides. Also, remember this, right? Because he is with a bad baseball team. There's going to be few and far between here how many starts he's going to get for the remainder of the year or if he's designated for assignment. But as long as he stays in there every fifth day, you can't help but avoid a guy with an over 8 ERA now to sort of pad your pockets here with overs, team totals, or just a straight-up fade here of the Arizona Diamondbacks. You have seven earned runs and two and a third, and I feel like it didn't even move his ERA all that much. In a pitcher's ballpark. Yeah. Yeah, just just tremendous, tremendous stuff 
from Keuchel. Chris Sale was back on the mound yesterday for the first time. I always feel like spots like this are tough. How good should you feel about this game if you're a Boston Red Sox fan or backer? Because Chris Sale comes out, five clean innings, only three hits, one walk to five strikeouts, no runs allowed, but you do lose the game to the Tampa Bay Rays. You take the good with the bad here, I guess. Yeah, 78 pitches here. And again, after five innings, you had a two to nothing lead. You're supposed to win that game. And yesterday, I said it was on with game time decisions with Gabe and Cam. Donnie, what do you like in this game? Well, I'm going to fade Chris Sale, and I like the Tampa Bay Rays. Well, if you wake up in the morning, like, hey, got that one right, 3 2 win. <laughs> oh, it was actually the wrong cap here because Chris Sale was very good and had a lead before handing it over to the bullpen. Sometimes better lucky than good at that time. But Chris Sale coming back, that's another guy here off of that extended layoff from a former superstar pitcher. I don't even want to say former superstar pitcher. Maybe he can get back to that level with Sale. But also, when you take a look at Max Scherzer, these guys are coming right back into Major League Baseball and dealing, Kevin. No doubt about it. But I think for Boston, this really matters. Look, they had a four-game set all at home against the Yankees. They were dogs in every game. And they went 2-2. Two and two. The point is expectation. I know that Eovaldi's injured. But Chris Sale, if right, of course, is a front-line guy that you say, look, whoever you have, we're not worried about it. We've got Sale on the mound. They need someone like that in Boston. And obviously, being able to bring a guy like Chris Sale back into the fold could be a huge boost for that team. You mentioned Max Scherzer. We've talked a lot about the Braves and the Mets series there. Mets attacked early. They got Strider out of there. I mean, he didn't even last five innings, which was impressive stuff. A Lindor RBI triple, but that's where the scoring stopped for the Mets. Olsen with a two-run homer. Duvall with a two-run of his own. And it was a 4-1 final in another low-scoring matchup between these two teams. It just shows you how big that win was for Max Scherzer there because we sort of saw the writing on the wall in this series saying, all right, if Max Scherzer is going to be an underdog, probably the rest of the series, the Mets will be underdogs. You need to try to steal that game, and they got it. It just shows also how good the Braves are because even in a start where Strider comes out and he is dominant, you were down after five innings, but you leaned on your bullpen. You said, all right, our bullpen versus your bullpen, and it worked out in your favor in this one. Atlanta Braves now 53-36, and 36, the Mets 54-34. and 34. I know Jacob DeGrom's coming back on the horizon. I know Max Scherzer looks like he's his dominant self, but the Atlanta Braves, as we say, just sneaking around the chicken coop here. I'm excited to see, and even as I say it as a Phillies fan, what they actually do with the trade deadline, because this is one of those teams where if they retool just a little bit, who's to say they're just not as good, if not even better than the Mets, with a healthy DeGrom and Scherzer? They're obviously the way Schreider stepped in, Freed's found his rhythm there. But now look, if you're the match, you'd love to win this game. You're in Atlanta. You couldn't get swept. You accomplished that in the first. To see Freed and Strider back-to-back, Freed only gets to go five, and Strider doesn't even finish the fifth inning. Feel all right about yourself there. We know the Mets, look, the expectation is Scherzer's back healthy. We add to Grom. We'll have the best staff in baseball. Reasonable expectation. They can add a bat. But look, you might look at this lineup and be a little underwhelmed at times. Pete Alonso, Starling, Mark Day, and Brandon Nim- or Jeff McNeil all make an all-star team, right? And Nimmo's had himself a good. This lineup is better, I think, than maybe people re- realize. Lindor, I understand. Look, he's batting 245. The guy's got 61 RBIs. Top 10 in Major League Baseball. This team's got a little bit more sauce in the lineup than they realize, and I do think they'll add. Last one, Donnie here. A's Rangers, you love the over in this game. What a bizarre game. Eight runs scored by the A's in the top of the 12th inning, 14-7 final score. Yeah, it looked like I was going to get stunted in this game because after five innings, you had four runs here for the Oakland Athletics and three for the Texas Rangers. And what do you say with an eight and a half? Look, Texas, give me one more run. I got it in my pocket, mm-hmm. and it looks like I was going to go down in this one, five to three, entering into the ninth inning. He scored two runs in the bottom of the ninth. They go nuts in extra innings, 14-7 to seven final. Who says Oakland has a bad offense? They dropped two touchdowns last night. Impressive. I mean, it's eight runs in the top of the 12th is just madness, sure. but you have to appreciate it there. Coming up next, we talked top 10 quarterbacks yesterday. Today, we talked top 10 running backs and potentially who is going to win the NFL's rushing crown for this coming season. We'll be right back. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. 
The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The morning after. 69% of the games for Houston away from home this year have hit an under, the most in all of MLB. And in Anaheim, the Angels have the highest under percentage as a home team as well. 61% of the Halos games at home hitting an under. What does that lead us to today with Noah Syndergaard on the bump for Los Angeles? An under of a total at eight. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Mahomes has one of them. Checks in at two. Tom has one of them. He checks in at four. And then there's Lamar Jackson. Not inside the top ten. Sometimes I wonder if I pulled up recent NFL trivia, would people just fall all over themselves trying to remember that an MVP award was won by Lamar Jackson. Execs and coaches and maybe even players, it seems, around the league not showing respect to Lamar Jackson. Only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. People still don't buy this team's going to be any good. And we got gifts in the last two years to get low win totals. The people said, ah, Derek Carr sucks. Thank you. I've cashed both over bets on the on the Raiders win total. I'm coming back in again today, this year with the over on the Raiders win total. But I'm going to be more heavily committed to the team because I think the team's got real playoff potential the bostonian versus the book pharrell coast to coast you can't make a case that roy mcelroy is not going to be a factor everything says that he will be there sunday afternoon he's playing angry he's motivated give him a golf course where it's going to test him get his full attention he's going to be dangerous colin morikawa i feel like he's sleeping under the radar a little bit but again what did he show us last year people say well he can't play links golf no 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 not, not the case he can hit his marks better than anyone the sports grid network Donnie Wright side. Yesterday, we took the list, uh, took a look at a list of the top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL ranked by 50 different NFL executive coaches and players. So that uh, process is still ongoing as they're now unveiling a top 10 list of running backs. What we've provided for you here is that list and the odds to lead the NFL in rushing yards on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Top guys, what you would expect. Derrick Henry, and Jonathan Taylor. They are the top guys on this market to lead rushing yards, if maybe still flip-flop. You'll still see that that top five rounds out with Nick Chubb, Dalvin Cook, and Alvin Kamara. Kamara, I believe, will be suspended or expecting suspension to start the season for the New Orleans Saints. Donnie, we start like we did yesterday. You see the top five list here, top five running backs, according, again, to execs, coaches, and players around the league. What catches your attention? I got to tell you, like the top four interchangeable for me. Now, Derrick Henry, if he comes back healthy, obviously he's a a welcome candidate there to be the best back in 2022. Jonathan Taylor is a superstar in the making, if not already there. Nick Chubb, every time you hand him the football, I don't know how he gets tackled. And then it's Dalvin Cook. I call him the ultimate team total, which is why I love to take the Vikings because you can throw him a screen pass. He can take it the distance. You can have a tall sweep. He takes it to the distance. One of the ultimate players. And then you sort of get into that market where Alvin Kamar, who I love, but you're right, going to be 
suspended and could be up to six games. That's going to take his value lower. But I would have to say just my initial thought process as I scan the top of the market, I think they got it right. And you can have arguments who's the top, but those top four running backs to me, clearly the top four running backs in the NFL. Interesting. So for me, I think maybe the best running back in the league is not inside the top five on that list. Do we really, have we already forgotten who Christian McCaffrey is? See, it'd be one thing if McCaffrey, you'll notice Zeke's not on the top 10. We'll talk about that in a minute, right? But the reason why Zeke is losing favor is that he doesn't look the same. I understand McCaffrey's only played 10 games over the last two years. I got you. But every single time he is out there, he still looks the exact same. Like the very best running back in the sport. Again, if he really is, here's the reality on McCaffrey. If they say, listen, this guy's not going to be healthy enough to stay a running back, he'll just transition to a wide receiver and probably be the number one wide out for Baker Mayfield in Carolina. For him to land seven on a list, I'm sorry. That's unforgivable. Derrick Henry, I got you. Jonathan Taylor with what he did last year, fine. But at some point, we got to stop the bleeding here, Donnie, on who Christian McCaffrey actually is. And look at his odds to have the most rushing yards in the NFL, 40 to 1 on Christian McCaffrey. I mean, Javonta Williams, half the number. Cam Akers, 25 to 1. What are we doing here? Rashad Penny, who's got the Pete Carroll game script here? I mean, we've got to be kidding. Christian McCaffrey, 40 to 1 to lead the NFL in rushing yards. That is slander across the landscape here on what I would still offer up as the best running back in the sport. It's a good point you bring up because I agree where Christian McCaffrey is at because entering into 2022, it just feels like, well, he'll get three dynamic games out of him, and then he's down five weeks with a hamstring injury. It's a shame, but that's just the, the concept of it. But if you look at his odds market here, he's listed the same as a quarterback in Lamar Jackson, but even better here, <laughs> a rookie, Brees Hall. But my favorite one is Alvin Kamara and Christian McCaffrey, both 40 to 1. One guy's probably not going to play six games just by default without injury in Alvin Kamara. So it is kind of shocking when you see and say, well, boy, they really don't trust him. Or I don't know if the script is out in Carolina where they're legitimately telling people behind the scenes, yeah, he's going to be healthy, but we're only going to hand him the football five or six times a game and use him more as a satellite running back on third downs and out of the backfield and in the slot. Because it is quite comical where he's at because if he is right, Hey, no surprise. Game one here. Hey, Kevin, did you see the first touchdown of the season? A Christian McCaffrey 76-yard running play to start the game. That's not going to surprise me at all. But I do agree with him being at seven because entering into 2022, I still have too many question marks. Is he going to be healthy? How good is that football team? But certainly, as you're right, the talent is no doubt about it there. I, I just don't think he has more question marks around him, though, than Alvin Kamara. It is interesting to see these lists kind of consecutively ignores looming suspension like Watson and now the same with Kamara. Like, that does miss the mark by a, by a good bit there. Yeah. I I will say, you know, in the, we're going to talk golf in hour number two. Cam's going to help us out. The Open's coming up there. Top 10s, top 5s, top 20. Like, can I get odds? Like, I don't know if McCaffrey's going to be able to do enough to beat out your Derrick Henrys and Jonathan Taylors. I got gotcha. you. But can I get odds for top 10 rushing yards? Can I get a head-to-head -head matchup, Donnie, against Brees Hall? Like you mentioned here for <laughs> yeah. Christian McCaffrey. Can I get it on Alvin Kamara and let me know what the numbers actually line up at there? We move outside of that top five. Obviously, I've talked a lot about McCaffrey. The, the, the list rounds out, though. Mixon, McCaffrey, Najee Harris, Aaron Jones, Javonta Williams. Javonta Williams feels like the story there for people in front of big names like Zeke and Saquon Barkley, but also I'm aware is Austin Eckler on this list. I mean, what, yeah. who in the deck? I mean, is Nugs is out here, you know, shaking up the straw poll? You got to be kidding me. Look, Javante Williams is fine, better than Austin Eckler. On what planet? Not one that I exist on. What? Any takeaways from the bottom half of this list for you? Yeah, you take like Najee Harris, you're talking about, again, entering into 2022, a young running back, fresh legs there. Aaron Jones, we know, is probably going to be a bigger piece to the running game here in Green Bay this season with the, that wide receiver core that they have. But I always feel like in order for these things to move, right, Kevin, when you see these polls come out, you got to have something that's a lightning rod. We had it yesterday. 
Top 10, what do you think about it? Well, there's going to be no Lamar Jackson in there. That's immediately where everybody went. If you look at this number, you're like, okay, Derek's a good running back. Jonathan Taylor, Chubb, Cook, Kamara. Okay, okay. You get the Javonta Williams, and you're right. That's the one that says, okay, he's in the top 10. Who would you replace him with? Who is better? Because if you're looking at just 2022, maybe he does take that next step. But it's a guy that, as we like to say, what? Been there, done that, hasn't done that yet. Now, you could also argue Najee Harris, but my goodness, that guy's usage rate was hand me the football, throw me the football all the time, where you had a market share split there with Williams and Gordon last year. So you're looking to take the next step. I would say he's the lightning rod of the top 10, no doubt about it. It's and I understand what you're saying, right? But I think it's voted on. It's natural. The idea that, oh, hey, Javonta Williams can kind of step up and answer the bell. And there's certain names I don't expect to be in front of us. Sure, that's fine. But Austin Eckler has checked the box. The, the argument of Javonta Williams, I to do it all back. What is Austin Eckler? So, again, I just think it misses the mark completely to have him off that list. Zeke, obviously, is a notable omission here. Even if you are out on Ezekiel Elliott, I think it's a little surprising to see the league, Donnie, out on Ezekiel Elliott in a similar fashion. He made, you know, that honorable mention, received some votes to be ultimately inside people's top tens. I mean, do you realize this guy had 1,000 yards last year? I know everybody's ready for Tony Pollard time. I think you've been leading the Tony Pollard charge for the past couple of years. Zeke is 25 to 1 to lead the NFL in rushing yards. Any juice on Zeke, that number coming into this season? The juice that you get is because, you know, from an organizational standpoint in the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones pulls a lot of the strings here. You know, not necessarily who's playing, what plays are called, but you know he sits in on that meeting and is like, hey, you know what? We're going to run Zeke. I pay this guy a lot of money. I like this guy. He's my draft pick. He's a superstar for the Dallas Cowboys. He's going to get the market share. But you're right. For the past years, I've been saying, every time Tony Pollard got the football, he looks way more explosive than Ezekiel Elliott. Mm -hmm. So I think he should be certain to get more of that market share from Ezekiel Elliott. And not this, because we'll also take a look at, it's a 17-game season. If you stay healthy and you're a 1,000-yard running back, that doesn't mean the same as what it was in the past when it was like a 14-game season or even a 16-game season. Now, it is a passing league now in the NFL, so 1,000-yard running backs are no longer just a dime a dozen where you just plug and play a guy because he's going to get 25 carries every single week as long as he's a starter. Zeke will probably approach 1,000 yards this year. But again, I'm going to have the same viewpoint here when I watch Cowboy games. Get Tony Pollard in the game. Get Ezekiel Elliott out of the game. I think the mix and match that they did last year will likely be replicated. But here's the deal, right? Because we talk about different ways to find value. Zeke right now over under 850 and a half yards for his season long number. Come on, over it every single year of his career, and that includes mm-hmm. the year he only played 10 games, has averaged four yards per yards carry every single year of his. How many yards is it? 50. Come on, Donnie. Come on now. I, I, mean, I, I had to well, what's eight you said 850 right or 950 850 and a half so you need 851 yards over 17 games for Ezekiel Elliott yeah 50 yards a game 50 I mean, yards a game I mean what do we <laughs> hold on now is that a principal like, play for let, you is that going to be added in there is it we not our list together yeah yes well remember last year like we like the, De- the Derrick Henry thing that blew up in our face as he had 10 touchdowns two weeks into the season we couldn't get the 11th yeah but the like, do you not feel the same way on the Zeke number there? That he, 50 yards I mean, a game, Donnie. Yeah, when you put that in perspective, and also, let's keep in mind, the Dallas Cowboys, last time we checked at the FanDuel Sportsbook, Kevin, are what? Favorites to win the NFC East. So you'd figure in mm-hmm. NFC East games, they're going to be favored a majority of the time, which means what? In the fourth quarter with four minutes to go, up seven points, you're not necessarily throwing the football, you're handing the football off. And Zeke is going to get those carries. Because when you see that number 850, say, okay, injuries and maybe it's not a top back. But when you put it into actual numbers and say, he needs the average 50 game, which means in week two, when he runs for 103 yards, you just yes. got two weeks right there in one game. That's where it goes. And even if you, hey, Zeke struggled. He had 40 yards on the ground. You're not even that far behind of what you need the next week. Exactly, right? If he Basically, if he plays 17 weeks, you feel incredible. Two 100-yard games, and you feel like you're cooking all of a sudden. Let right. me bring up one other guy that you'll notice is not on this list here. Saquon Barkley. Same season long at 850 and a half. But here's the big gap. 
Zeke to lead the NFL in rushing yards is 25 to 1. Saquon Barkley is double the number at 50 to 1. Your man, Ryan Beatty, as everybody calls him over there in New York, has the opportunity now to see if he can not just get the most out of Daniel Jones, but Saquon Barkley as well. Let's not forget 1,300 yards his rookie season. Health, 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 I got you. 50 to 1. Any juice on Saquon Barkley for NFL rushing crown? Now, there is some juice there because we saw the talent when it was there. And quite frankly, it's one of those, right? Look, look at the Giants. You see when Odell Beckham gets drafted to the Giants, going, he is going to dominate Kevin for a decade in New York. Didn't work out for him there, and he ends up trading mm-hmm. away. But when you first saw Saquon Barkley as a rookie, and if you're an NFC East fan like we are of the Philadelphia Eagles, or if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan or Washington Commanders, what was your first inclination? We're going to have to deal with this guy for like seven or eight years of absolutely being an outrageously talented running back, catching the football and running the football. I need to see in training camp. Give me some of the training camp reports because always in the past when he was coming back for injury, so vague, like I might be around for game one or I'm on a pitch count here. If I can get one of those in training camp, I feel great. There's no restrictions on me. You do have some juice at 50 to one. No question. It's a big number there. Again, you know, and, and we probably won't get there. But it is the NFL, so maybe. I think a really nice development in these markets would be top fives, top tens, in the same way we talk about a golf tournament there. I think there would be juice in those markets, and I'd love to, like Derrick Henry would be like minus 1,000 to be a top 10 rusher, things like that. Like I would love to see those markets materialize ultimately here on the FanDuel Sportsbook. A little more NFL coming up as we close out our number one of the early line right here. On sports. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare bets. they do what's fiscally responsible? Let's see how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full football. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And God being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. Oh boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing a little Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The early line. But Josh Allen ranked third on that top five because this is what caught my eye. In front of Tom Brady, Josh Allen 7-1 to to win MVP. We've talked about it a lot. The Bills not only favored to win the AFC, but favored to win the Super Bowl. It just is becoming clearer by the day that this is the Buffalo Bills season for a lot of people. Only on SportsGrid. The morning after. Do you agree that Kenny Pickett should be the betting favorite right now to win NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year? I don't, Ben, and I've said this a few times before, but I don't think any of these quarterbacks should be on the top list for Offensive Rookie of the Year because I don't believe any of them are going to have significant starting time unless something major happens. You look at Kenny Pickett at plus 550, the favorite to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. And then Garrett Cole will be the payup price here at 10000 
500. Uh, Washington in particular, David, 1-9 and nine in their last 10. Worst team in baseball by far. Uh, but pretty decent matchup tonight at home. Yeah, they stink, but Josiah Gray does not stink. Now, uh, he has definitely had some troubles with run prevention this season. He's given up, you know, six earned runs a couple times, seven earned runs a couple times, but even... The Sports Grid Network. Talking Super Bowl trophies during the break, and a guy who knows a lot yeah. about some Super Bowl trophies is Rob mm-hmm. Gronkowski, though apparently oh, me. no more interest in Super Bowl tro- <laughs> <laughs> No more interest from Gronk in winning a Super Bowl. He went out, doubled down on the retirement. Yes, that's what you have to do when you retire and then unretire. I will answer the phone if Tom calls, but that is because he is my friend. I am never coming back. I don't care. It's not happening. I won't play football again. Donnie, I assume you believe this, and we'll never talk about Gronk playing in the NFL again, right? I mean, what's the – first of all, from Gronk's perspective, what is the purpose of this? Hey, are you going to come back to the NFL? Like, just say, hey, you know what? Right now I'm happily retired. I can't predict the future here, but it looks like, no, I, I, I have no intentions of coming back. You know what we would say to ourselves? All right. Sounds good here. That's that's exactly what you should say. But I always love the fact that people are so, you know, definitive here. I'm not coming back. Tom can call me up. I'll never come back. Come on now. You know you love Tom Brady, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You're a football player. Money will be on the table. No training camp. Come here for the playoff run. Forget about the regular season. Why would you even shut the door on that? Even if you have no plans of coming back, it's very easy to answer. Like, oh, hey, look, I'm happily retired. Never say never, but that's where I'm going to leave it. At the end of the day, Gronk doesn't retire until Tom retires. But Tom can't retire until he misses the NFL for a full year plus. So realistically, Gronk probably won't really be retired in my mind until about 2025. That's what happens when, one, your entire career is tied to one guy, and two, you retire and then unretire. Those are the rules. That's how this works. And it's not a bad thing, by the way. We like to watch you play. We like to bet you to score touchdowns. We like to bet you to over catches, over yards. It's a good thing, Gronk, that we want you back. It's much better than you're running around for the 24-7 title. Trust me, pal. That closes mm. out our number one right here on the early line. Our number two begins with everybody's MVP, but the sports books show how Otani get him the ball. 